Alright guys, so now let me show you some really basic commands that you're going to use all the time. The first one is how to create a new database. So by default, whenever we set everything up, we were given one database called local. Now if you guys don't even know what a database is, whenever you create a new project or a new website, each website that you create, you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna create a new database for it. It's pretty much the main container for everything, for all of the data that's gonna be on your website, you're gonna wanna throw into this database. Now technically, a database is made up of different collections. Now a collection is just groups of similar data. So let's say that you're making a social network. All of the user's basic information is gonna go into one collection all of their let's say posts are gonna go into another collection anytime you want to have a group of similar data you make a new collection and each item in that collection is called a document but I'll actually show you guys a couple examples I think it'll be a little bit easier to understand so um let's just in this tutorial pretend that we're gonna make a website about hockey hockey players stats a bunch of hockey related information We'll call it hockey.com, like that's not taken already. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna type use hockey, because remember, the database we're using right now is just local, and that's just the default one, so we obviously wanna make a new one called hockey. Now you can run this by either hitting this green button or hold down control and hit enter, and we now switch to db hockey. So we're now using the hockey database. So what this use command does is it pretty much looks and says, all right, do you have a database already called hockey? If you do, I'm just gonna switch to that. If you don't, then I'm gonna create it for you and switch to it. So this isn't only switching to a database, it's also the same um, command to create a database as well. It's actually pretty handy. So if you ever just wanna check what database you're currently using, then you just type db hockey, obviously, no surprise there. If you ever want to delete a database, then you can just use DB, which gets the current DB of hockey, and you can call drop database. And that's going to delete the current database of hockey. And it says OK. However, I actually want to create and use that. So I'm just going to type use hockey again. And I'm also going to clear this out a lot whenever I have a bunch of info. So if you just right click it and hit clear all, it keeps all of the settings. So for example, we're still still using hockey. It just, you know, pretty much just wipes your slate clean. So now we have a database called hockey. Let's go ahead and insert some information into it. And I'll show you guys some cool things. Before this tutorial, what I did is I just made a bunch of sample um, JSON data. So if you go to my source code from tutorials on my GitHub page, and by the way, if you have your own data that you want to use, it's fine. Um, you know, it's gonna, not going to make a big difference. But if you want to use mine, follow along, go to my source code from tutorials, scroll down to this other sample JSON data, and I just have this real quick Penguins players, which is just a bunch of information about um, players from my favorite team, Pittsburgh Penguins, what position they play. A random ID number that I got, um, their weight, height, birthplace, age, their name, and it has birth date and their number that's on their jersey. And if you want to use this one, fake bank data, then say that you're making a website for a bank. This is just, I don't know, like 35 customers or something with a fake balance in their name and all that good stuff. And by the way, I have to show you this because. I can't keep it a secret any longer. If you ever just want to generate a bunch of random data and don't want to use any of mine, then go to this website, JSON Generator, and what you do is you pretty much type in all of the fake information that you want and you just hit generate and it just makes a bunch of fake info from you. And you can put it in any format that you want. And actually that is how I got all this fake bank data right here. So this is just, you know, randomly generated users. This, however, is actually real information of people, so there you go. All right, now, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah, so let's say that we wanted to pretty much take this data and use it in our website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go 
and grab one of these dudes at the top. This guy is Craig Adams. He is, uh, I don't know, not that great, but he has a lot of heart. So let's go ahead and add him, and we'll figure out how to do that. So in our database, which is hockey, remember, anytime we need to insert a new doc document or a new piece of information, it needs to go in a collection. So a collection, like I said, is just a group of data. What is this data about? Well, this is all just player data, data about the information individual players so I'm gonna name this collection players and then after this use a command called insert now if you guys are like you know what you're trying to insert information into players but you don't even have the players collection yet well what this is gonna do whenever we insert it is just like before it's gonna look for a collection called players if it doesn't exist it's just gonna create it for you on the fly so inside here you just throw in any object which is Craig Adams and I'm just gonna go ahead and run this and there you go so it says I now have one collection called players and it has one document and that document is this right there and just for fun what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert one more and who is this Bo Bennett He's uh, pretty young. All right, so if I want to insert one more player into the collection players, this is what I do. DB players, insert another player, Bo Bennett. All right, so we now have two players inserted into our collection players. All right, what if we want to actually add a bunch of these guys at once because if I have to go through one by one and copy all of these that's going to take a while. Well check this out. Let's just say that we want to grab all of these guys right there. We can actually grab the whole file but I'm gonna be doing a few things later. So what we can do is this. If we go to DB players insert we can actually insert an array by using these little square brackets right here now inside this array we can just throw in a huge list of players and remember separate them with a comma and after your last one since you don't have any after that you don't use the comma so now if you go ahead and run this it's gonna say inserted seven apparently I grabbed seven new people so we have those seven that I just inserted and the two before it so we should have a total of nine so actually let me go ahead and clear this and I'll show you guys some stuff. So if we just want to take a step back and actually see what's going on, what we did, the first command that we can use is show collections. And if we run this, it says we now have the players collection, which was that group of data that we inserted everything into. And this system.indexes, this is just one that was given to us by default. It uh, has to deal with behind the scenes stuff. Not really, really worried about it right now. So now inside this collection, let's say we wanted to um, look at all the, all the documents, in other words, all of the players that we inserted. So we're going to DB, which is hockey, players, which is that collection, and we can just call the command find. So hit this, and it's going to find all of the players or documents that you inserted. Now, all right, it gives it to you in a nice long string. It's kind of all jumbled together. If you ever want to make this a little bit prettier or formatted, you can just go find. And by the way, I'll mention that. Anytime you want to just say you want to call this command again, but you're too lazy to type it out, in your command prompt, you can just press the up arrow, and it's going to get the last command. So you can actually press up, cycle through the last couple ones, but remember find just takes all the documents in a collection and displays it now we want to display it a little bit prettier so the command for that is actually pretty I'm not making this up hit enter and we now get all of the nice pretty formatted documents in our collection so there you go now one other thing before I let you guys go is if you have several documents like we do, I think we have, what do we have, like 9 or 11 players? 7? I don't, I can't remember how many. But we have a bunch. 
if we ever just want to get one and view it, then we call DB players, so database collection, and find one, which essentially means find one document. So it finds the first one. Remember, we inserted Craig Adams at first. So I know I gave you guys a lot of information in this tutorial, but just remember, you have a database and inside it you have collections and inside your collections you have documents. In other words, the individual players in this example. And if you guys, like I said, don't quite get the hang of it, then watch like three more tutorials and you guys will be fluent in MongoDB. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.